Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Table 4 here bringing you another Minecraft Forward 2 tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the 150 centimeter Flax Chandler 34. Developed in the late 1930s, the Flax Chandler 34 and 37 used 150 centimeter or 59 inch diameter parabolic glass reflectors with an output of 990 million candelas. The system was powered by a 24 kilowatt generator based around a 51 horsepower 8 cylinder engine giving a current of 200 amps at 110 volts. The searchlight was attached to a generator by a 200 meter cable. The system had a detection range of about 8 kilometers, 50 miles for tar or sorry about 5 miles for targets at an altitude of between 5000 and 4000 meters or 13000 and 16000 feet. The system could be made mobile using two sets of special trailer, 104 units, which you can see in front of you, and uh, one for the searchlight and one for the generator. It required a crew of seven to operate. The searchlight could be traversed 360 degrees and elevated from negative 12 degrees through the vertical to negative 12 degrees on the other side. Early war tactics for the searchlight development or deployment had the searchlights forward of the flak lens in a zone of preparation laid out in a grid with five kilometers between each light. Sound locators deployed with the searchlights helped them find targets. Later, these were replaced with radar systems. Uh, 61 special fixed quadruple 150 centimeter mounts were produced in an effort to extend the range of the 150 centimeter searchlights. However, these proved unsuccessful. So yeah, the uh, most widely used German uh, searchlight of World War II was the 150 centimeter sized one. Um, and as you can see, this right here is the towed version of it. So I also have a tutorial for the deployed version which you can kind of see there in the background so if you do want to build the deployed version you have the option of doing that as well um, but as you can see here we also have the towed version so you can have this being towed in convoys or maybe set up in a haste and they're using it as it's still attached to this uh, trailer so it kind of gives you some playability can add some different environments aspects kind of switch up what you're trying to go for um, for whatever the uh, little builds and stuff like that you're you're making um, I think the build itself came out really good, pretty detailed, and has a lot of cool little features for it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and move into kind of taking a look at the build itself, and then we'll go ahead and move into the tutorial. So starting off, if we have the searchlight itself, as I mentioned, this is a 150 centimeter light, so pretty good large size um, light for sure, and has a lot of power. Um, you know, we all see the iconic scenes of World War II where the searchlights go up, air raid sirens go off, and the flak bombardments going off, and this is pretty much what these um, lights are, are, are basically you know, there, so, kind of an iconic piece. Um, so lots of detail around the, um, the light itself, as you can see, we have all the different positions here for crew, um, changing elevation and travers of the light to track targets, and lots of the, and good detail and all that kind of, all the mechanisms and stuff like that for it. Um, the main difference, obviously, here compared to the other one is the addition of the special 104 um, trailer. So kind of similar to that of what the FLAC-88 used for transport and all that, these uh, two axles would be able to detach and attach whenever they needed to transport the weapon or the um, equipment and made it a very useful um, you know, piece of equipment for uh, utility purposes. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the overview of the um, light and what we're going to be building in this tutorial. Without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, moving into our first uh, layer, we start with layer number one. Now this right here kind of decides what you guys really want to do with it. If you want this to just be stationary without being attached to anything, um, then we won't have this hitched up to a vehicle. But if you do have it hitched up to a vehicle, there is a different kind of approach you need to take to actually build in this um, searchlight. Basically to get started here, we need to decide whether we're having it attached to a vehicle or not. If we are having it attached to a vehicle, we need to make sure there's proper space um, behind the vehicle to make sure that there's no problems with terrain. So make sure to take a look at the dimensions at the beginning of the video again, just to make sure everything's good to go. Um, but basically to start off with here, we're going to be going ahead and placing down a stone brick top slab. Now if you are building this, this should connect up to pretty much any one of my vehicles. This is going to be the very tip here. So you want to have this either connected up to the rear bumper of the vehicle or underneath it, one of the two, basically just trying to represent that it's actually attached to the vehicle itself. Um, again, any of my German equipment or anything like that that would basically tow this would pretty much work with this. Uh, there shouldn't be any problems. And then you would basically build a end rod back from it, a stone brick top slab, a skeleton school to both sides of the stone brick block, and so on. Now, if you do want to have this stationary without being attached to a vehicle, 
Most simple modification is to go and delete this slab, and in its place we're going to have a skeleton skull in the ground here. And this shows that the hitch is just kind of laid here in the ground and not attached to anything. We're going to be building this as if it's like this, because we don't have a vehicle it's attached to currently, so we're just going to be building it like this. But again, there's the two options for how you can attach this to a vehicle if you want to. Anyways, going back from these skeleton skulls, we're going to place down an end rod here to both sides like this. And then we want to place down a row of three of stone top slabs across. On each end, we're going to place down a nether brick upside down stair. After which, we're going to go ahead and take our stone brick top slabs and we're going to place down a row of three of stone brick top slabs with again a nether brick stair to both sides, but these stairs should be rotated so that they face each other like so. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, dark oak fence gate to both sides, just like this. Or actually, sorry, we're going to go and switch this to an end rod to both sides. And we want to go ahead and then place down a stone brick top slab, just like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and skip a space, and we're going to do the same thing, just reverse this time. So two stone brick top slabs, two end rods, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of three of stone brick top slabs, a row of three of stone top slabs, and then our narrow brick up sound stairs here to both ends. So just like that. And once that's done here, uh, we are pretty much good to go for the base here. So as you can see, this is what we should have here for layer one, pretty straightforward design, nothing real crazy going on here. And that right there is gonna form the basis of our trailer here for our spotlight. And that right there is gonna finish layer one off. Let's move into layer number two. All right guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to go ahead and get started with here, we're gonna take our nether brick stairs and place down two nether brick stairs on top of these two upside down stairs all around for all four wheels. And this will complete our wheel design uh, for the vehicle. Now with that out of the way, uh, we can go ahead and now start adding on to it. Starting off with the front here, we're going to place down a red stone repeater coming off this stone brick top slab. We then want to go ahead and go to the sides of these narrow brick stairs and we're going to place down a stone stair like that coming off of them toward the front. We then want to go ahead and go in between the stairs and on the insides here we're going to place down skeleton skulls like so. After that, uh, along the side here of these two narrow brick stairs, we're going to place down two andesite walls on both ends. In this base here in the middle, we're going to place down a grindstone facing this direction with a dark oak fence gate coming off the grindstone and opened up toward the grindstone like so. After that, uh, we want to go ahead and then take our stone slabs and we're going to place down one and two stone slabs back. We're going to go ahead and go to the narrow brick stairs here, place down a stone stair to both sides and then a skeleton skull like that coming off the sides there of those stone stairs. With uh, that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and then place down a stone top slab coming off these two stairs like so. And we want to go ahead and then go to the middle space here and we're going to place down a stone top slab as well. After that, uh, we want to go and take our stone top slabs. We're going to place down a row of what is going to be three across the middle here. And then we want to place down skeleton skulls coming off these two stone top slabs like so. With that out of the way, uh, we want to go and then place down a stone brick stair to the side here. So in this space right here, stone brick stair and same thing over here. After that, uh, we're going to go and place down a row of three of stone top slabs across. We're going to go ahead and have a iron trap door going off these stone, the back stair of these stone brick stairs on both sides there. Once that's done, we want to go ahead and then place down a stone top slab here in the middle with a stone stair coming off the faces here of these narrow brick stairs. And then on the insides here, we're going to place down a skeleton skull like so. Then on the inside here again, we're going to place down the direct walls there on the insides there to both sides, followed by a stone brick upside down stair there. Um, and then we're going to place down a grindstone facing this direction. And like we did before, a dark wood fence gate coming off the grindstone, open up toward it, followed by a stone stair come off those two narrow brick stairs, a skeleton skull come off the side there of those two stairs, and then we want to go and just place down a item frame. So we're going to go and grab ourselves an item frame, grab ourselves a red stained glass block, and also a dark oak sign. And just on this stair right here, item frame, red stained glass block, and a dark oak sign like that for the um, little tail light here on the trailer. And anyways, that right there is going to wrap up what we have here for layer number uh, two. And with that, let's move into our next layer, layer number three. I right, guess moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer 3 to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go and take our end rods, we're going to place down 1 and 2 end rods like so, and 1 and 2 end rods like that. 
From that point there, we're going to go ahead and take our stone pressure plates. We're going to place down one and two, one and two, just like that for the front there. After that, we want to take iron trap doors and we're going to place them down on top of the air brick stairs, just like this. And same thing here for the back wheels as well. With that out of the way, uh, focusing in on our light here, we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down a red stone repeater on top of these two stone top slabs with the notches flicked to the sides. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a dark oak fence gate and we're going to have it coming off or on top of this stone top slab opened up toward the rear. We then want to place down a stone block here in the middle, followed by a stone stair like this to both sides, and then coming off the stone stair, we're going to place down a andesite wall to both ends like that. And then coming off the end of the side wall, we're going to place down a dark fence gate that's going to be opened up toward the end of the side wall like that. After that's done, on top of these two iron trap doors, we're going to place down one more iron trap door. We then want to place down a nether brick stair come off the stone block and then to both sides of the nether brick stair we're going to be placing down a wither skeleton skull like that over here on the left side and left side only we're going to place down a stone slab right side we're just going to go ahead and leave blank in the middle space here we're going to place down a dark wood fence gate going off this nether brick stair followed by a second fence gate uh, going back and then a end rod here to the side with that out of the way, uh, we're pretty much good to go for this layer, and that's all we need to have here for the basis of the light. Here's what it looks like so above from so far, and that's what we should basically have. So anyways, that's it for layer number uh, three for the build. With that, let's move into layer number four. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer. We moved on to layer number four. For layer four, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a polished anisite block on top of the stone block, followed by a light gray stainless block going forward, and a narrow break up sound stair here to both sides of it. From that, we're going to place down a skeleton skull coming off the front stair of the stairs. After that, uh, we want to go ahead and go back from this. We're going to place down a polished anisite corner stair coming off the snare brick stair, just like that. An air polished anisite block here in the middle and a polished anisite top slab to both sides. After that, on top of the wall here, we're going to place down a upside down uh, corner stair of stone and same thing over here as well. With uh, that out of the way, uh, we're going to go ahead and then place down a dark wood fence gate coming off the side tier of these polished anisite top slabs. We can go ahead and then grab ourselves a iron frame and also a cobweb. And coming off the dark wood fence gate, we're going to place down an iron frame cobweb over here, iron frame and a cobweb. With uh, that all done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, anisite wall on top of this dark wood fence gate. We want to go ahead and go to the right side of the end side wall and we're going to be placing down a dark wood sign. Also, uh, we're going to be placing down a stone button on this polished anti block there in the middle. For the sides here, we do need to go ahead and grab ourselves a iron trap door. We're going to place down an iron trap door on top of those dark wood fence gates and we also want to place down a dark wood sign coming off the side of the iron trap doors like this for the little seats here. And then on the back, uh, come off this uh, stone or inside wall, we're gonna place down a stone slab like this, and we're gonna go ahead and then place down a dark oak with trap door on the back of the stone slab. And again, that'll be that seat there on the rear. And, anyways, once that's all done, that is going to complete layer number four for the build. With that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number five. Moving on to our next layer, we're gonna be moving on to layer five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, we're gonna go ahead and take our uh, light gray stained glass blocks, we're gonna place down a row three across. Followed by a seam lantern on the come off the middle one uh, toward the back here, and then a polished anisite block to both sides of it. We then want to place down a end rod come off the middle block, followed by a stone button to both ends, and then on top of the skeleton skulls, we're going to be placing down a end rod again to both sides like so. After that, we want to place down a anisite wall on top of this uh, upside down stone stair like so, and then going back here, we're going to place down a polished anisite block to both sides, and then we're going to go and place down a chiseled stone block here in the middle with a stone button come off the two polished anisite blocks to both sides and actually to the right side here uh, instead of the stone button we're actually going to have an end rod like so coming off the end rod we're going to be placing down a stone brick slab like so followed by a wither skeleton skull which is going to be on the right side of it and then a wither skeleton skull on top of the anisite wall right here we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a cobweb and item frame and we're going to place down a item frame here on the side of the stone brick slab and a cobweb in it like that for um, this section here and also one last thing we're going to go and take our skeleton schools and we're going to place them down coming off these anisite walls 
And with that all the way, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer five. With that, we're gonna move into our final layers, which are gonna be layers six and seven. We're gonna basically put the top of the light on and pretty much finish this build off. With that, let's go ahead and move into layer six and seven. All right, guys, moving into our next layers, we have layers six and seven. For these layers, to go ahead and get started with here, we're gonna place down a light gray stained glass block on top of this one right here, followed by a another brick stair to both sides of it. After that, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a uh, polished inside corner stair to both sides followed by a polished inside block in the back or in the middle and then we want to go ahead and just grab ourselves some polished inside slabs and place down a slab going back from the corner stairs and a polished inside block in the middle with a stone button like that after that we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull coming off the stair here a end rod going back from it and an air skeleton skull same thing over here skeleton skull end rod skeleton skull and lastly, uh, for the top here, we're just going to go and grab ourselves two iron trap doors and we're going to place down one and two iron trap doors on top, just like that to go and finish it off. Anyways, that right there is going to complete my design for the mobile version of the 150 centimeter uh, flax searchlight. Well, if you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use, if you guys do end up using it, I do want to say you guys give me proper credit for it. This main thing from the sun to build to my channel or this video if this does appear on social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use whatever projects you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. Um, other than that, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary Tuba before, and I'll see you guys next time.